one of the most well-known theropods from the British Isles. It's famous for its heavy claw. Today's dinosaur, Baryonyx. Unlike the previous dinosaurs I've done videos about, Baryonyx is a comparatively recent discovery, one from the 1980s as opposed to the mid 1800s. On a chilly day in January 1983, an amateur paleontologist by the name of William Walker was searching for fossils in the pit of the Smokejack Brickworks in Oakley, Surrey. After some time he came across an unusually shaped rock in the clay. He took it home and started to separate the fossils from the clay and the rock, he soon realised that what he'd found were pieces of a large claw. This is a replica of the claw that Walker found, and as you can tell it's a really really good size. The outer edge of the curve is about 28 centimetres long, and would have sat on the index finger of Baryonyx when it was alive. Now Walker got in contact with the Natural History Museum in London, then the British Museum of Natural History and they sent out a team led by doctors Alan Jering and Angela Milner who spent three weeks excavating the find. Now when done about 70% of the animal was discovered including most of the skull and the mandible, most of the cervical and dorsal vertebrae, parts of the sacrum, the ischium, the ilium, the pubis, almost the complete full limbs, along with femurs and fibulas, along with pieces of rib and caudal vertebrae. So what type of creature was Baryonyx? Well Baryonyx is part of a clade of theropods known as the Spinosauridae, named after the African theropod Spinosaurus. The connection at first wasn't realised, mainly because the only remains of Spinosaurus that were found in 1915 were fragmentary and became even more fragmentary in the Second World War when the museum in Germany was bombed. So all paleontologists had to go on were old drawings and pictures of the Spinosaur remains from prior paleontological reports. Unlike Spinosaurus, Baryonyx however was reasonably complete, giving paleontologists a good idea of what the animal looked like. Now this info then helped with the reconstruction of other Spinosaurids that were later found in the 1990s and in the early 2000s. So what else do we know about Baryonyx? The Surrey animal is a sub-adult, about 7 metres long, and it's estimated the fully grown adult would have been somewhere in the region of about 9 metres, making it one of the largest theropods found in Europe. Now parts of the stomach contents of Baryonyx were also fossilised, and they included the partially digested remains of a fish, providing paleontologists with their first direct evidence of Piscivoran activity within theropods. We do know, however, that Baryonyx wasn't exclusively a fish eater, as the remains of a young iguanodontid were also found inside the stomach area. A study of the oxygen isotopes in 2010 in spinosaurid teeth indicated a semi-aquatic lifestyle similar to modern crocodiles, so combining this with anatomical studies, particularly in the shape of the skull, and the snout, which if you, as you can tell looks very very crocodilian in its form, all support the idea that these animals lived a semi-aquatic lifestyle. Now this actually shouldn't be that surprising considering that much of Europe along with parts of North Africa were a series of small islands at the north end of the Tethys, so it shouldn't be that surprising that these animals lived a semi-aquatic lifestyle. Now other baryonic remains have been found on the Isle of Wight, in Spain and Portugal showing that this creature had a much wider distribution than just southeastern Britain. Time-wise, Baryonyx comes from the Barimian stage of the early Cretaceous period about 130 to 125 million years ago. A replica of the Baryonyx skeleton is found on display in the Natural History Museum in London 
and the original fossils are stored in the museum's vaults. As a side note, Barry Onyx managed to make an appearance in the latest Jurassic Park movie as well, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Barry Onyx is one of my favourite dinosaurs and it represents a shift in our understanding of how these animals lived, providing us with the first evidence of Piscivorian activity and a semi-aquatic dinosaur. And now it's bonus dinosaur time and today it's Sucosaurus. Now in the 1820s, a name that you should be familiar with by now, Gideon Mantell, acquired some teeth from the Cookfield site that he was working at and identified them as being from a crocodile. This was supported by William Clift, Georges Cuvier and Richard Owen as well in their later examinations of the organism and it was Richard Owen himself who gave the name Sucosaurus in 1841. And for most of the time that we've known about Sucosaurus it was considered a crocodile. It wasn't until after the discovery of Baryonyx and some work done by Angela Milner in 1998 and they realised that the teeth found of Sucosaurus are actually teeth from a Spinosaurid. In fact they're almost identical to the teeth of Baryonyx. Now normally what this would mean is in the case of scientific nomenclature the first name takes priority however the teeth of Sucosaurus although similar to those of Baryonyx aren't diagnostic enough to decide whether it is the same species or whether it's a different species. And with Baryonyx being a much more complete specimen, it still takes priority as all the material we found from Baryonyx is diagnostic of a particular species of animal. Work done by Portuguese paleontologist Octavio Matias in 2011 suggested that Sucosaurus, although similar to Baryonyx, should be considered gnome dubia, as the material is not diagnostic. <laughs> 